Hello everybody, my name is Zool, and welcome to my guide for Fallout 3 with Mod Organizer. Hello everybody, my name is Zool, and welcome back to my guide to install mods for Fallout 3 using Mod Organizer. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at mods that are all about stability. That's right, today we're going to be keeping the game nice and stable, using a variety of mods to help improve the game's experience by both squashing bugs and preventing crashes. So unfortunately, there's not going to be any big feature mods today, but that's going to be coming soon. If you missed the first episode of this series, go ahead and check it out. In that episode, we covered how to get Fallout Script Extender working with Mod Organizer, the basics of Mod Organizer, and pulling all your mods out of Nexus and preparing them for use later on in Mod Organizer. Now that we've talked about all that, I think we can get started with today's video. Okay, the first mod that we are going to install is the updated unofficial Fallout 3 patch. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate along to the link in the description, head over to the files section, and we're going to download the updated unofficial patch uh, mod manager version. And you're going to go ahead and download this with manager. Once the mod finishes installing with the manager, what you're going to need to do is open up your mod organizer, go over to the downloads tab here, and you will see a little green icon here. Mine says uninstalled because of course I had to test this before showing it to you. And you need to basically click on this and it will bring up a menu like this. From here we can get rid of the updated, you know, I, I like to just kind of change these things a little. Plus the unofficial followed three patch, click manual. From here, you're going to right-click on this data folder and click Set Data Directory. You pretty much have to do that anytime there's a data folder inside the main folder here. Once it gets to look like this, which is the correct way this should look, click OK and the mod will begin installing. After that, we've installed the Fallout 3 unofficial patch, so let's move on to the next mod. Whoa, 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 do not click away. Yes, it looks like I'm crazy. We are on the New Vegas Nexus. This is a mod with New Vegas in the title, and it is very clearly a New Vegas themed mod, but don't worry, because this is actually the mod that we're looking for. Head over to the download page for the New Vegas anti-crash fix, and download this mod manually. Now, the reason why we're using this mod is pretty simple. It fixes crashes. Now, I can't take credit for coming up with this fix or whatever. I found this on one of the step guides for Fallout 3. I'll link that in the description below if you're interested in getting a very, very detailed look at installing mods for this game. But just take my word on it. Download this mod manually and we'll sort them things out in a little bit. All right, as we can see, I've downloaded the New Vegas anti-crash fix and I've extracted it using WinRAR or 7-Zip or whatever you want to extract it with. Once that's extracted, you can go ahead and delete the original archive. We're not going to need it anymore. From here to avoid confusion, in case you also have New Vegas mods on your computer, I like to click on the folder, click F2, and change the name to something Fallout 3 related. So I just did that there, just so I don't get it confused. Once we've done that, open it up, and we're going to click on this NVSE folder here. We're going to click F2 to rename it, and change the name to F-O-S-E. You need this to say F-O-S-E, or it's not going to work. Once we've renamed that, we're now going to have to change something in the faux mod. So what you're going to need to do is open up the faux mod, right click on the module configuration, and click edit. From here, you should get a notepad document, which should look just like this. Then we're basically going to change folder source NVSE to FOSE. And we're gonna change this one as well, FOSE. Once you're done, click File, Save, and then you can exit out of the Notepad document. Now that you've done that, you can go ahead and close out of this, right click on the folder, and then click Add to Archive, and create a new archive called FO3 Anti-Crash. Now that we've done that, open up the Fallout 3 Mod Manager, scroll down, click Install Mod, and then we're gonna be looking for that archive that we just created. So let's click on the Fallout 3 anticrash.rar and click open. Once it's installed, it should say NVAC anticrash. I like to rename this now just so that I know that it's the Fallout 3 anticrash. And what I usually do is kind of a weird convention. I call it FO3 New Vegas anticrash just so I know exactly where it originated from, but also that I've done the Fallout 3 fixes to that. After that, you can go ahead and activate it, and we can move on to the next mod. 
If one thing can be said about many of the recent Bethesda titles, it's that they run better in windowed mode. Now, I don't know the exact details as to why, but it's just a simple thing that seems to work. Obviously, this has a drawback in that there is a window around the game. One tweak does a couple of things. It fixes the double cursor bug, which plagues multi-monitor users and anybody who alt tabs out of the game. It gives you borderless window mode, dynamic processing priority, and a bunch more. It's basically going to make your game run better. Head over to the file section and click on download with manager for this file. It's going to remind you that you need FOSC, but that shouldn't be a problem. After that, head over to your mod organizer and click on the downloads tab. From here, just double click on one tweak and click manual. You're going to need to right click on this here and set data directory. After that, everything will be set up as it should, so just click OK. Once again, don't worry about the version thing here, that's just some weird glitch. We, we don't really need to be too concerned about that. And after that, we're done. The next mod that we're going to install is the Fallout Stutter Remover. This is a program that helps improve overall performance, in particular the stutters and the little micro stutters that occur when playing on pretty much any Bethesda game. You don't need to worry too much about the details, again this is not a showcasing series, this is just how to get your mods up and running really quickly. So head over to the file section of this mod, once here we're going to download the fsr underscore 4 2 3 you're basically going to download the latest version of this mod, which is version 4136 right now. This will once again appear in your downloads tab, from here just go ahead and double click on it, and then you're going to right click on the data file and set data directory. Once that's done, it will look good and you can click OK. And then the Fallout Stutter Remover has been installed. Okay, so the next and final mod that we're going to be installing in today's video is CASM or CASM. This is an autosave manager. Now, I'm going to give you a warning right now. For some people, this can actually cause crashes and some errors during combat. So if you're seeing a bunch of problems, try uninstalling this autosave mod and it might help you. But for the vast majority of people, Casm is a really helpful tool to replace Fallout 3's terrible autosave system, and it'll help you especially if you have a fairly crashy game, which you might depending on your mod load. Head over to the file section of this mod and click download with manager. Once this is done downloading, double click on it in the downloads tab, click manual to make sure everything's okay, in this case it is, then click ok and the mod will be installed and now it can be activated. Don't worry about the version, that's just a weird glitch with the Nexus website, just completely ignore that, it's fine. The next step in our guide is to get Fallout 3 to run 4 gig enabled. What 4 gigabyte enabling is, is it's allowing the executable of the game to use more of your system memory or RAM, and we're going to be enabling this using a program called CFF Explorer, so let's do that now. Now there is actually a mod that achieves the same thing as this program called the Large Address Aware Enabler for Fallout 3, but I prefer using CFF Explorer since it's just a lot easier and it doesn't require us to download a mod and do a bunch of stuff. It's very simple, and this is actually kind of a nice program to have in general, so I I'm going to show you how to use it now. First and foremost, you're going to need to download the program by clicking right here now. Once you downloaded this, basically you just need to install the program like you would any other program. I'm sure you can do this on your own. After that, what we're going to need to do is open up our Fallout 3 location. This is wherever your game is installed, so Steam, Steam Apps Common, Fallout 3, or Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition, whatever you have. The folder you're looking for is the Fallout 3 folder in the Steam Apps. In this folder, we're going to be looking for Fallout3.exe. If you can't see the .exe or any of the file extensions, by the way, click on the video linked in the description and that will help you out. It's called File Extensions. We're going to be looking for Fallout3.exe. We're going to right click on it and we're going to open with CFF Explorer. From here, we're going to get this menu. Now, it does look a little bit confusing, and we're not going to go into any detail about this program, so just follow my steps carefully, and if you're really nervous about it, make a backup of your executable before you do this. Click on the File Header option right here, uh, and then where it says Characteristics, you want to click right here. And then there is a little area here that says app can handle greater than 2 gigabytes of address space. Check this off, click OK, close out of this, it's going to ask you if you'd like to save, click yes. If you'd like to overwrite the original file, yes, again, and that's it, the app is now 4 gigabyte enabled. Alright, we got one more thing to go to help improve our game's stability, and that is to edit the ini file for the Fallout 3 stutter remover. Now I can't take credit for discovering this, or even really understanding this 100% completely, but I got this off of a step guide that I mentioned earlier, it will be linked in the description if you want to read into this in a little more detail. Okay, to edit the Fallout Stutter Remover Ini, it's actually quite simple. Click on the Data tab located 
here in your mod organizer. Then scroll down until you find a folder called FOSE. Click on the drop down and then click on the drop down of the plugins folder inside it. Now you may need to slide this thing over here so you can see the end of the file extensions, but you're looking for the fallout stutter remover.ini. Right click and select open slash execute to open this in notepad. Alright, so we have the step guide that I'm following open in the background here and we're going to be using that for the any changes. I'll link this in the description if you're interested, but basically what we're going to do is go along to this section of the any, see these any files right here? We're basically going to copy them and paste them on top of the original followed stutter remover any. So we're going to click on the master section, click control C to copy, go back in here, select all this, paste i think i have two brackets here so let me just get rid of one of those but yeah as you can see here we've changed the any file now if you're having any problems anything like that you can always just delete the any file and then reinstall the mod and restore it back to its default settings now we're essentially going to do the same thing for the fps section so make sure you go down to the fps management section and not the experimental section uh, but there's going to be one thing of note Maximum FPS should always be 60. This game does not handle FPS higher than 60 very well as it causes the physics in the game to bug out. So make sure you have it set to that. Otherwise, just follow this step and then go down to the heap section and then paste that over the heap section area of your any file. And that's about it. Hopefully I kept this video somewhere close to 10 minutes. I'm trying to keep these videos fairly short so as not to overwhelm you. But please stay tuned because in this series there's going to be a lot more videos, obviously. The next step, we're actually going to be installing some mods, getting your user interface going, stuff like that. And eventually we'll have your game into a state where, you know, you're going to want to have a nice stable base game. But that's coming in the future, so consider subscribing, check out some of my other stuff if you're interested, get hyped for Followed for or if it's not out already, if it is, I hope you've enjoyed Fallout 4 and that it was a good game since this is the past for you, even though it's it's not out yet for me and I really want to play it. Anyway, I am terrible at outros, so I am just going to leave by saying, I have been Zool, goodbye. <laughs>